Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to walk through the process of installing InfluxDB version 2 on Ubuntu and configure it as service with SSL. But before we dive into this, be sure you hit subscribe button and turn on notification to stay up to date with our latest tutorials. Let's drive in right now. Uh, before in going for installation, uh, let's take a look quickly to the file system layout of the InfluxDB, which might give you a suggestion about creating additional mount points, etc. So for this one, let's go to the Influx page. I'll add this link to the description also. So on the Influx page. Uh, if you go a bit down, select Linux, and we go with install package as we go the way of installation, installing package way. So we see the main locations which are in Warlib InfluxDB. Inside we have engine folder, and inside the engine we have data, so it stores time structured merge tree TSM files, basically data, and we have wall. WAL, which is stands for uh, write ahead log files, which is needed. So we also have influx default file, file based key value store for non time series data such as influx DB users, dashboards, and tasks. We also have SQLite database with which is keeping influx DB notebooks and annotations, and we have config toml file which is configuration for InfluxDB. As a hint, what probably makes sense to do in production environment is probably to have Warlib InfluxDB as separate mount point out of the standard ones or let's say out of the main OS ones. Just that it would if it's fill up would not crash your server itself. So uh, by looking at that one let's probably start for installation itself. We could find the main stuff for adding uh, apt source on the link of this one. So I will add also in the description it's repos influx data com. And in this case, as we db installing Debian, this Debian test. And if you simply take these three lines, copy them, and back to server. And on server side, if you just paste them. And we have added. So after we add of course, we need to do sudo apt get update to get updated that list. It takes a couple of seconds. And after it finish, we'll immediately go and install influx db2. And we do that with sudo apt get install influx db2. So it tells us it installs the InfluxDB2 itself and CLI, so that's good. It, we don't need to install CLI by itself later. By the way, CLI is quite useful, you can do a lot of things also. So, and you see in a couple of seconds it just finished. So what we'll do now is we also we check if sta uh, service got, so if status Influx DB. So we here see it's here. Let's try to start it. And let's check status again. Okay, it's active up and running. Good. So as we have installed this up and running, uh, you should go now on the browser and on port 8086. It should be already waiting for us uh, initial setup. So I switch to the browser, go to 127.0.0.1, in this case 8086 port, and we have this welcome screen. So we click get started. So it's asking for initial user. I'll just put my user, you put whatever it makes for you sense. Also we put the password. Oops. Password. Uh, 
as it requires to have any organization, so we put organization, I will put in my org in this case, and whatever initial bucket, I will put start, and hit continue. So on this screen, we already got set up. A very important thing is to keep this secure, this super user token. Also copy and save it somewhere that you would need that later. So I have copied the clipboard and let's just go inside. Good. And that's basically what they have up and running info that you see so fast. But uh, to think a bit more secure, so uh, it's currently learning HTTP, means not really secure. So what I would recommend at least go to SSL, means HTTPS, that at least would have an encrypted connection for that. So you have also options to go with CA, that's Certificate Authority, that most recommended. In my case, it's lab, so I still would go with self signed, which is also somewhere in the middle of a nothing and CA. So if you have option to have certificate authority, use this one. If not, then at least self signed certificate. So for getting this uh, self signed certificate stuff and moving to HTTPS, then I back to the server. Uh, for certificate generate, we will use OpenSSL. So let's check also the default location where normally you put certificates in SSL. So we have a folder, that's good. So let's generate certificate. So sudo open SSL. We do request minus x509 we use. We do for notes and new key. Uh, we'll use RSA 2048, that should be enough. We'll do key out and we'll put etc SSL. Let's put influx db self signed key and we'll do out for certificate, which is in the same location. We also will put influx db self-signed CRT and let's put I don't know for one year okay oops I think I misspelled one part good so uh, put what's valid for you I'll keep the default ones just will put the name of influx one my lab local. That's FKDN. And here we go. Should we have now certificate and key and it is SSL. Okay, we have it. Just let's allow this uh, certificate to be accessed by influx user, which is running a database. So for that one, we do sudo change owner. And we'll put influx db owner and group, and we'll put that for etc SSL influx db sign both for them. Good, let's check. Okay, they are now good. So, as we have certificate now, what we need to do is to modify config toml file. So, for that, we do sudo v and it's an etc influx db config toml we already have something here so we just append two additional lines it's tls cert and tls key with a path to where we put the certificate itself and key good for that one save a file and as normal after that actions so what we need to do is restart the influx itself. So what we'll do, system shell stop influx db and we'll do start and let's check status. Good, it's up and running. So let's check on the browser. If I hit refresh, 
it's already saying that it was HTTP request to HTTPS server. So let's switch to HTTPS. We're getting this warning because we are not using certificate authority using the science help, so we just do proceed. And here we go. So let's try to log in also. Good. And we are in. Good. So we have with SSL, we have uh, up and running. Uh, one thing what also got changed now is uh, if I back to to our server that CLI, it looks like it works, but if I run, for example, influx server config, we should give server config. Uh -uh, I got the error. And why have it happened? So basically, if I check now, influx uh, command and config, I see it's pointing to HTTP, which well, we already switched to HTTPS. So to fix that, uh, we need to create config file or update. Well, we could update, but in this case, we need to create as its first one. And that's what we'll do with influx config create. It's saying, well, let's look first for our options. It's saying create and minus n, we give a name, which we say default. We need to put host URL because that got changed now. We put HTTPS local host 86. What we need also to give is token and that token which we saved. So we now can take and use it here. So I'll grab and paste here mine. And we put org, in this case it was uh, my org. Good. So uh, as you see, we created a config file which is now pointing to HTTPS. If we were to run now influx server config, it giving about TLS, that's because we use a self sign certificate. If I had skip verify, uh, we got the answer. So it's very important to use skip verify if, if you're using HTTPS and self sign. One more thing what also would make the sense to do is if I could config it's not active. So what I could do is config set saying with name default and activate. So at least it's now act. Good. So the CLI works, GUI works. Uh, if I switch one back to the GUI, I want to show a bit more. So I will just show that it something works. So uh, I'll create a bucket. Let's say name YouTube. Uh, I put retention time, so that's retention time. What you would should have here uh, influx you have very good thing that it automatically could clean up the data. So if if you put never, then it's never. But if you could older than and put the date, then actually it keeps the data on for nine days, and older it gets deleted. So I created that one and. We have for add data some options. I will use for now just line protocol, just simple as that. And using manually, we'll take from example, copy paste. We'll put something like country tag Germany. I don't need a tag too in this case. Data would be in my case likes. And add whatever number. Uh, I'll remove the date because when you don't have date, it's putting that exact date on the right. You click 
see click and you have date so just to validate i can go to the buckets go to my youtube uh, see it's already my measurement crates with field likes and i could filter countries if i have and if i submit that data already here you also could switch to script editor and use flux language to to do some stuff but that might be go to other videos if someone is interested to, to see this so uh, that's the main things what we have already one thing what came to my mind also in case you're interested to have some configuration options or for example switch port so that i put as bonus quick to show also that's not rocket science to do that so as uh, options what we able to configure including uh, port so we have on this link i will add also in the description and if you look for something like bind so we have http bind address how we'll do that we'll do through environment uh, file for influx so for this one we copy this environment variable name and back to the server once we're back to the server we should modify then file on etc default influx db2 so you see we already have here some which is pointing to tom file then we add this http bind address and we put port for example 887 and then we save it do system ctl uh, stop influx db then we do start and we just check the status it's up and running and if i back to the browser and here we'll back to the influx and i change here port to 887 of course it's kicked me out because we restarted influx so i log in my user and we are in so we're on that port so that's the hint again the similar as we changed from http to https if you go back now to server side and we run influx command for example server config we see it doesn't work saying can't connect and that's again because we need to also to change config part so influx config we see it's pointing here what we could do as we created already so what we do influx config set with name default and we update really so post really equal you can copy this part and put seven And if you run server config again, put skip verify. Here we go. All works. Good. So, and here we have it. We have successfully installed InfluxDB2 on Ubuntu, which basically similar should be on Debian. So we configure it as service, so we can start restart the service, and it's using SSL, so HTTPS. Explore some basic functions and configurations, but if you would like, we could go deeper on other videos, just let me know. And I hope you found this guide helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tutorials like that. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Thank you.